I'm Jack Puffington for RobotBrigade.com. This video is about different ways that you can encode binary data uh, for use in a digital system. This is not about how to encode binary data for transmitting over a serial line. That's a topic for a different video. Let's go over the most basic way that you can encode binary data, and that is straight binary. All right, uh, each bit represents two to the power of something. And each one, so two to the zero, one, two to the two, two to the three. All right, so this represents one, two, four. So one, two, four, eight. 16, 32, 64. So uh, if I take this binary number and I'm converting it into uh, decimal, 64 plus 16 is uh, 80, plus 8, 88, 90 is the value here. So uh, that's the most simple way that you can uh, encode binary data. Now let's look at binary coded decimal, which is often abbreviated as BCD. Binary coded decimal has the value 0 through 9. And uh, it is encoded with 4 bits per Per number, so zero 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 for zero, now since this is four bits, it's possible to have the values up through fifteen. But 10 through 15 are actually invalid codes for binary coded decimal. They're just not used. And if you receive a, a value 10 through 15, you'll know that you have uh, an error somewhere. So if I want to encode a value, say 5, 6, 3, all I have to do is take that value, look it up. So 0, 0, 1, 1 for 3, 6 is 0, 1, 1, 0, and 5 is 0, 1, 0, 1. Just like that, this is the binary coded equivalent of this decimal number. Binary coded decimal is often used when you want to send something off to, say, a LED display that displays uh, numeric data. That's when you would use it. Uh, it's not terribly useful for doing calculations with. Unless, of course, you were multiplying by 10 or something like that, in which case you just shift them over 4 bits and you're done. All right, the next one I'm going to talk about is gray code. And gray code is used when you may have a position transducer and you need to have completely error-free results from it. Or if you are sending, um, let's say you have a counter counting up somewhere, and you need to send that off to uh, some other part of your circuit, you need to be absolutely sure that you're never going to have a glitch. You would use gray code for that. Um, I'm going to show you how I create gray code. And then I'm going to show you maybe a, a different, maybe more cerebral way of doing it. Uh, I come from a very visual background, and I think, I think visually. So when I'm creating a gray code, I think of stacked blocks. And this is a 4-bit gray code, so I have 16 possible, um, 16 possible options or codes. 
code would be the right word. All right, so since we have 16 of them, we're going to start off with uh, a block of eight at the very bottom, starting at one of the edges. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and eight. The next one up is going to be the same number, but shifted over by one half of its width. And All right, so with each successive stage, when you're setting the blocks down, you want them to be perfectly balanced right on the edge of that, uh, the previous level. So now every subsequent level from up from this, if we're going up more and more bits, you're going to take the number of uh, cells, this is wide, divide by two, and then set it right on the edge. And also over here. All right, and the final one, we divide by two again, so it's only two wide now. So this is a four-bit gray code. And as you watch, as I move my marker across here, this one goes dark, that one goes dark, that one goes dark, that one goes light, that one goes dark. There's only one change as you move from one position to the next. One bit changes. Now let's take a look at what would happen if you had regular old binary encoding. We'll just look at part of this table. So this is 0. If I encode 1, this is 2, and this is 3. So as I go across, one bit changes. That's fine. Oops. 2 bits change. Now it's not necessarily bad. As long as you're in the center of it, you're going to read it just fine. But let's say your sensor is right in between them. You may read this as a 3, or you may read it as a 0, or it could be a 1, or it could be a 2, and you just don't know. And so that can cause glitches in your system. And that's why it's so much better to have a uh, gray code uh, for a position uh, like that and similarly as you're you're transitioning from a 1 to a 0 and maybe you've got another one like that this one might go high before this one goes low or something like that if they're transitioning at the same time like if you're going from here to here so uh, you don't want that to happen in certain situations now let's look at a way that you can create a gray code in a different uh, manner. So maybe you're not a visual person, you need sort of an algorithm. All right, well let's take a one-bit gray code. There you go, zero and one. That's your only possible choices. Now uh, this type of gray code is called a reflected gray code, and it's exactly actually the same as this. Uh, what we're going to do is create a reflection line and this here has been flipped down to there. It's mirrored down. Anything above the reflection line is a zero for the next bit over and a one uh, if it's below it. Now let's create a three-bit gray code. Here's our reflection line. We reflect this one, so it's zero, one, one, zero. And this one becomes one, one, zero, zero. Anything above the reflected line is a zero for the new bit, and anything below it is a 1. So there you go. And if I just reflected it one more time, I'd, ha I'd end up with the exact same thing as this. Um, if you were to treat it, I guess we'd be going across there. Zeros would be a clear space, and a, a 1 would be a, uh, a filled-in space. So there's one more type of code that I'm going to take you through, and that is called ASCII code. And ASCII is spelled A-S-C-I-I, -I, and it stands for American Standard uh, Code for uh, Information Exchange. And uh, this is often used when you are looking at text. So if you're looking at a web page, it is most likely transmitted as ASCII data. 
for the text uh, unless it's encoded and then it won't be. Um, ASCII is one of those things you're just not going to memorize it. Uh, if you want to figure out what an ASCII code for something is, just go to ASCII table dot com. That's where I go to when I'm working on some project and I need to figure it out. Uh, but just for quick reference, capital letters start at 65. Lowercase letters start at 97. And the letters start at 48. Or the, did I say letters? This is numbers start at 48. And they're in alphabetical order. So a capital B has the code of 66. And I should say that this is base 10, not hexadecimal. Um, and there's other codes for like carriage return and stuff like that. Uh, generally, you'll find that most of the useful codes are below 127. And that's because ASCII started out in the past where it was only used, uh, it, it only used the first seven bits, and later on it was, uh, it was changed to be eight bits. And so most things now support all uh, 256 different codes, but not all. So that's the four different types of codes that I have for you today. If you enjoyed this video, then take a look at my YouTube page, and I have other videos about digital logic there. I'm Jack Buffington for RobotBrigade.com.